So delta t is in impulse. So truth is, is like if you if you can't see the through the problem right now, um, you can at least maybe start to find some clues just by writing down what is the impulse again. So the impulse was this thing. So j net is the integral of f net dt from some first time to second time. And we learned from the previous problem that maybe these times have something to do with this business here. So let me uh, go in and fix that. It's like, oh, you know what? This kind of reminds me of that kind of business. Uh, oops, this is a vector. Um, and then also from the previous problem, we just worked problem number one, f net was a constant in time and came out of the integral, which was super helpful, right? This was the net force on the projectile, and then there was the integral ta to tb. And all that's left over as the integrand is dt, so it just integrates to t, evaluated at tb and ta. So this is f net, um, and I'll, I'll just cut to the chase, it's multiplying this time difference, which is the answer. It is the same thing that this question is asking for. So the question is, oops, um, I really want to know this. This is my goal. This, do I know this? But I, it's not enough just to know this, right? I also need to know this. Do I know this? So this thing, yes, if you were paying attention, like all this is, is W, which is MG. Um, I know M, I know G, and I, I know how to think about the vector value of G. So heck yeah, I know this. So if this is my goal, I know this, I still need to know this, but this I think I just calculated but I don't know the value of it. I don't know what number and direction and units to give this, you know? So what I do know, though, is the impulse momentum theorem, and I'm also going to mix in something that hopefully, at least after this video, you will never ever forget it ever again, but um, maybe something that you already know is going to be helpful. So I'm going to use the impulse momentum theorem that J net is delta P. So let me update my place in the problem solving or problem exploration that delta P from A to B is equal to W, because that's what F net is, right, um, times the answer to my problem. So delta t is the answer to my problem from A to B. You have to be super careful. You know that um, uh, in, in variables, if you know, like, for example, let's see, uh, c is equal to d times e, and I want to solve for e, e is c over d, right? This is OK for scalars but it is not, not okay for vectors. You might be tempted, okay, so I know this, I wanna know this, maybe I can just divide W underneath delta P. That is such a big no-no. You do not know how to divide vectors. That's a complicated issue, and it turns out that you can define many, many different ways to divide vectors because, well, in particular, there are many, many ways to have the product of vectors. Yeah, so, okay, um, so we can't just divide it. This is not an algebra problem where I can divide W underneath delta P, even though I know W, and maybe I can get delta P, but we're going to have to be smarter than that. All right, so let's keep going. I, I'm, But you, you cannot do this with vectors. So um, just following my nose, I, I, I know this. This is MG. I want to know that. I wish I knew this. So some pre-knowledge. If I think about what happens to the projectile, is it starts with this momentum at A, and when it gets to B, you know, it, it rides out that, that parabolic curve. It's got a momentum at B 
that is purely horizontal. And what's more is P sub B in the X direction and P sub A in the X direction. These two things have to match. And the reason that these two things are equal is because there never is any impulse in the X direction. There is no impulse in the X direction and the reason is, is because the weight force, which is the only force available to do any impulse, the weight force is in the Y direction. J sub X is zero, therefore these two things are the same. The reason that I think this is pre-knowledge, this is knowledge before, it's because it's knowledge that just comes from projectile motion. The X direction velocity is unaccelerated. It's unaccelerated in this projectile motion problem. So the X direction part of the momentum cannot change. Here it is earlier, has the same value as here it is later. And actually, the X direction momentum never ever changes because the impulse is only ever in the Y direction. Okay, so I've used this. But also some pre-knowledge. P sub B sub Y, the momentum at the position B in the Y direction. This is after it has lost all of the upwards momentum and before it has gained any downwards momentum. So this is the time at which it has no Y direction momentum. But P sub A sub Y, the Y component of the momentum at the beginning, this is not zero. So if I can figure out, right, the relationship, um, or I can figure out what delta P is from A to B, uh, which I'm beginning to see that I know how to compare the momentum in the X and Y directions earlier and the momentum in the X and Y directions at the time B, right? I can say what the delta P is. So P sub B sub X um, minus P sub A sub X these two things, they do not have a difference. So that means that this is delta P sub X. Um, so we can do delta P sub Y next. Um, so delta P sub Y is not going to be zero this time because delta A sub Y and delta B sub Y, the later and the former times, they do not have the same value, so their difference is not going to be zero. Um, so let me just put this in here, so P sub B sub Y minus P sub A sub Y. Um, so yeah, so now we're here, so Let's think about, so P sub B sub Y is zero though. So we know its value is zero. So let's subtract off what, what we know is the value for the momentum um, at time A in the Y direction. So at time A, here's time A it's got Y direction momentum associated with its Y direction velocity. So it's four meters per second in the Y. Four meters per second, J hat. And so that's the velocity to get momentum. You multiply by the mass, so two kilograms. And so delta P sub Y is equal to negative eight kilograms meters per second and it's in the J hat. Apologies for going into the corner but um, so this is a useful piece of information. This is a useful piece of information because now we can go and write down the left hand side here. So delta P 
from time A to time B is equal to delta P in the X direction from A to B. Um, that's the I hat component of the change in momentum vector and delta P in the Y direction J hat. Delta P does not change in the X direction, so it's zero I hat. And delta P, though, in the Y direction has a change of negative eight kilograms meters per second J hat. So here's delta P. Okay, this is very nice because now we have, we know this, we know that, but we want to know this. So we almost know every, well, we actually know everything except for what we want to know. <laughs> so, so here's our goal, delta T. Um, w equals, um, we'll just go ahead and write it. It's uh, 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared minus J hat direction. So 2 times 9.8, so 9 doubled is 18. Uh, 0 0.8 doubled is 1.6, so 19.6. So this is 19.6 kilograms, meters per second squared. This is also known as the Newton, actually, right? Mass times acceleration. It's the Newton um, with a minus sign and a J hat, like this. So there's W. Um, here is delta P. Um, yeah. So uh, it's as easy as sorting everything out. So there's no I hat anywhere in in, um, in in the weight force and the I hat in the delta P just happens to be zero. So I've got negative eight kilograms meters per second J hat um, is equal to minus 19.6 kilograms meters per second squared with a J hat, but don't forget uh, our delta T. So delta T is this multiplied thing, got a common minus sign, a common J hat, and it's it's tempting to imagine dividing both sides by J hat, but uh, um, you can't divide by vectors as described earlier, but what you do know is there, there's nothing else going on. J hat is common though. So the prefactor in front of the J hat has to be the same value. It needs to have the equal sign. So you could probably agree with me. I, I hope you do. But uh, what we can update and say is delta T, which is our goal, is it must be, so delta T is on this side. We'll be dividing the 19.6 over to the left hand side. So 8 kilograms meters per second divided by 19.6 kilograms meters per second squared, right? That's what delta T is. The J hats, we sort of dropped them. They are common. And the minus signs, we drop them because they're common. So here's delta T. Uh, you put this into your calculator and you're going to get a time. Um, so calculator will do the 8 divided by 19.6 part for you, but the calculator will not calculate the units. So Let's uh, be really careful about units. So kilogram and kilogram on top and bottom. That's a no-brainer. But then we have meters per second divided by meters per second squared. So this is 8 over 19.6 kilograms knock each other out. Meters per second times the inverse of the bottom unit, right? You when you divide by a fraction, you have to multiply by the inverse of the denominator. So you can see meters meters knock each other out. Seconds knocks out one of the seconds on the top. 8 over 19.6 seconds, which is, uh, right, what we should get. 